I agree. Discussion. So anyways, let's get going. Uh, that's all I want to hear. Agenda today, just going to walk through the Constitution. It'll take 10, 15, hopefully not 20 minutes. Um, that's all. Then we'll talk at the end about uh, three approaches that were proposed uh, from the executive team position. Um, and then we'll discuss that. Hopefully get some reasons as well as some of the ideas. And then we'll talk about some of the stuff that we're going to do. So we're going to go about through just about everything, starting off with our mission statements. Uh, we had a mission statement and a purpose statement for all the teams that into one. Um, so things that changed, I'll just go through it. Institutional allowed student run organization supports students in the challenging members of the undergraduate and enriching activities. As they achieve the highest standards of success. Um, the underlying statements here are the things that changed. Uh, those are the of the student run organization and uh, the size of the student organization run programs. Um, another focus on enriching activities as opposed to the word scholarly, which was a little bit more there. We do a lot more of this. this, 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 this. Um, and then this last bit here is about the purpose and the images. Preamble, new members of the Michigan Technological University, so on and so forth, so the Constitution and support the two rules, policies, and regulations of the Technological University. As much as we want to put together our own Constitution and run our own walks, we want to always be submitted to the policies and regulations of the Michigan Tech. So that is very important thing to draw that to Constitution. Starting with section one, or article one, section one, the executive team, we're talking about the organizational structure here. Uh, we have one faculty member who's the director, and then kind of four, five student members eligible. Um, that eligibility is determined by the expectation of the requirement of policy, uh, which is the bylaws in the middle of the institution. Executive team's roles are to be the vision and direction of the institution. They organize and provide all the Section 2, state committees, these are the four committees that will be constantly provided to the board. Membership, communication, operations, and program services. Membership focuses on representation for members, keeping practice of communication, minutes, media, operations, resources, and process to sell on finances. And programs and services may be initiatives and programs and services 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 so talking about the positions, uh, first one, first and foremost, the director, um, ultimately responsible for their student leadership as well as the generation of continuity over 20 years of civil intelligence organization. He's non-voting, uh, but as we go about on everything, and as much as I go on, but I've been there because it seems this focus is mostly on university relationships and partnerships. Um, we also have a mix in the world's membership and assign membership sciences, which is a process by the region. Section two, uh, president, uh, main focus ultimately responsible for the success of the strategic direction of the institution. I received the vice presidents and 
Then, um, just to point out that there's a separation between a committee chair, who chairs an extra committee that we um, add later, and vice president, who chairs a standing committee. Yes, so vice presidents chair the standing committees, and special committees are assigned and chair the committee. And that is necessary. Could potentially be. Vice President Chairman of the Committee. So if it's a number, another member that chairs a special committee, will they be included as a part of the executive team as a VP? No, I have a constitution. There would be a bylaw position that describes their authorities and responsibilities. So I think it might be important to specify whether a bylaw revision could make another vice president role to chair a committee, or whether it does not have that power. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Executive team, which is article section number one, that is number five, so it's impossible to add more information to the constitution. Okay. Is there a limit on how long a standing committee uh, or a special committee is in place after it's written to bylaws? Just until you write it out of the bylaws? Uh, that should be included in the bylaws. Okay. Uh, Do you want us to save miscellaneous stuff like this to the end? Is that what you said on your agenda? I'm going to use the questions. Uh, miscellaneous stuff is important. Okay. Cool. Let's quick about this. As soon as there is this, we're going to be able to do it. Okay. Class representatives, uh, this is largely the exact same as in the Constitution. There's four by class. So, first year is not a lot of second year. For the board ones. Uh, representatives, uh, they represent the interests, concerns, and feedback of the House of Representatives. General rules exist in the And they also focus on fostering the community and bias and that class of the So the little main connection between the two classes. And then a uh, new position uh, we're creating for this constitution is the liaison. Um, so there's one between each pair of committees, so on the four committees that the six so it's all that uh, But they are there to represent the interest of concerns and feedback with one committee to the other, and vice versa, to the main and the two committees that facilitate communication. Um, and so they foster the team. In both of these positions, uh, the class representative and the liaison are intended to be the more senior of leadership roles. The senior ones are here to be the responsibilities and the board. I think that is a little bit more of a leadership role. So starting off, maybe you work your way to the council representative slash community and then finally, uh, section nine, all members uh, of the Constitution the Constitution and to improve the positive relationship between the two pretty basic things. Pretty much everything else we put on the list. This is the organizational chart that we showed in the general meeting before. 
To make the distinction right now, but an important distinction might be how we treat the class reps in the current constitution as opposed to how they are in the new constitution. Yeah, the new constitution gives them a lot more say, a lot of the proposals and calculations and stuff. So, instead of handling, because currently we kind of have the, off, the executive board and then the officer board, and the officer board does handle a lot of. The strategic vision now and the policy making and that kind of thing, and you're just kind of focusing them down into appropriations, legislative changes, and that kind of proposals and here on those instead of kind of doing everything. Yes, so in, in the past, uh, we were just part of the office board and the office board. So it's kind of what we have now, and um, the more people that you have, the more busy those meetings get, and the longer they take, and the harder it is to come to a final consensus. It's nice to have all the input of people, but not all the time on every issue doing every little task in the institute. It's nicer to be able to delegate tasks and being able to delegate um, appropriations and legislative changes and that kind of thing to representatives so might be a nice thing. It gives them a lot of responsibility and authority, but it kind of um, streamlines how long-term decisions are made and how those kind of short-term decisions are made that's going to be two groups. General members have an issue with the decision that the executive team makes. Will they be able to make themselves heard maybe through the, their class representatives? Is there a way to maybe yeah, override we'll things? Into a lot of the okay, <laughs> I'll leave that for now then. <laughs>
Or maybe not. Did you just say four out of five? I um, could. Okay. That's a change in your constitution. Name. Well, I mean, the way that you define the executive team, we can't add or subtract people from the executive team. So why not just make these and say four out of five? Well, you can't without a constitutional revision, and this would allow some continuity between constitutional amendments. Yeah. So if you revise the constitution to add or subtract people from the executive team, can you just add or subtract from the forum then, too? Sure. While you're then amending? We're yeah, assuming that they're going to think about it. This is really just a run of the old constitution. So it should be changed. <laughs> Communities are constitutionally the most weak. Um, this is because um, the current review project meetings are probably some of the detail. And those were once a week, and that's where we all gathered and we did to the So with that, like um, I was telling you, it's difficult for us to meet next week because of approval. Can we add a clause in there, except for or like exceptions approved by the executive team or that kind of thing? Have a you know at least put an approving body on there to uh, keep people responsible. So yeah, well I mean you want to keep people responsible. So like well we're not going to meet for a week because I don't feel like or month, meet for a month because I don't feel like it. But at the same time things happen. Yep, agree. Okay. Uh, first within the first three weeks, uh, that gives us enough time to have our general meeting and then first. Article 5 of the proposals, the legislature starting off on bylaw awaiting proposals, changes to bylaws, goes to the class officers, and constitutionally goes to the executive team that gets to the Appropriations is primarily a financial thing, so all that. Present to the operations committee the resources and the Again, there's four representatives. Yep. So, that's so, going to be consistent throughout the rest of it, and so I will change the rest yeah. of it. Yeah, but my, my question is, are we going to do half or three quarters? Half. There are four and three quarters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. Just checking. Yeah, because yeah. otherwise they... Yeah. What is not the VP of Ops mean up there? So let's say the Vice President of Ops says no, I'm not going to do that. Then you'd have to vote the next can't rule the Vice President of Ops decision because that's the person who very close to the subject and should be involved in the development. So perhaps, <laughs> I don't know. Well, you could propose again. Lot of this is a recurring theme. Sounds good. So on the section one, I didn't see an approved by. That's because the stuff you said is the bylaws and the constitution. Okay, so as your own section. Okay. Um, initiatives is basically exactly the same thing. Member 
removal uh, resignation, we can resign from their positions of the Institute of General. Yes. Yeah, that's yeah, that's actually said. Yeah, because he holds ultimate authority and membership status. Okay. I'm just wondering how. Practically, um, so yes. when you do your policy I enforcement. Right now, you don't. So, <laughs> in, what we should be doing right now is doing policy enforcement. We do all the records and send the records for them to check. This is more active resignation, where implied resignation is more about member um, requirements what we're, and upholding bylaws kind of thing. Um, active resignation was just one that designed to a position before, so as you know. I sent him like a page and up to this guy resigned. It's his responsibility right now to get a quote of the register that they're going to that's basically what it comes to. Oh, oh. That's what this that is focused on because we can okay. take them out of our records and do whatever we want. Okay. I'm fine. Um, so, five months later. Uh, impeachment. All five should be clear. I'm not representing this case on the prosecution. He tells a process, but I'm just going to summarize all the comments and orders that he's done. So basically, someone presents the director of this LA what he says that he's going to do. The person who is potentially going to be impeached uh, has the opportunity to write a rebuttal within a certain amount of time. And then within a certain amount of time, all of the information is disseminated, filed by the director, and conviction for a criminal impeachment. Requires two thirds of people to send that. If the information regarding the, uh, the impeachment would be like sent out to the institute, isn't there some like, is there some privacy things or maybe you know, the, the contents of the documents is like, what the so the application is a great rebuttal that can be broadcast to the agency. He's got the. So if someone writes a rebuttal, but they don't want to like broadcast that in person. Well, they're they yeah. have to justify it's themselves at a trial yeah. anyway. Yeah, that's true. Um, and this is pretty much the exact same. I suppose it's sort of a part of your job description as a member if you plan on getting impeached, just know that your stuff is going to be We're all supposed to know that. If my resignation is on the record for the vote membership, I'm going to fail to fulfill the duties of the Constitution. I'll fulfill the Constitution on the wrong side. I'm going to fulfill the Constitution on the wrong side. I'm going to fulfill the Constitution on the and the director must be notified of the number of certain time. They got a certain amount of time to change their ways and say, yeah, I'll have to do it. Article 7 bylaws, I mean, I'm not talking about the SA in the late. I know it sucks, but I have to get a little picture of the SA in the late. <laughs> yes, that's my um, Bylaws, many of them, it's done in the class representatives just like it's currently done. My majority vote is um, present. Section Chief Standing 
policies, the next policy which describes the front end. So, how do you do the director of the um, if those are in the Constitution, then do they require a constitutional amendment to change them? This Constitution mandates the existence of banks okay. and what they're going to do. Not necessarily okay. how things are done. Uh, and then the Constitution part of the Screen through the executive team, um, the operations, and then three quarters of the four out of five. No, no, sorry, I thought that was a good Exactly, the board of the institute, now the people is keeping the code. How is that going to be done as far as like this upcoming vote? Uh, that's decided by the Um, I think the best thing to start an example, like if the 
constitution of the United States, and all for the president of the United States would appoint the next president of the United States or would submit or would submit like some sort of suggestion to, to someone else and then appoint the president of the United States. I think most people would be upset by that. And it even seems kind of ridiculous to think about that if if, if the president just chose the next president. It basically takes it, it takes all the knock to uh, have the situation. And then I, I think that with appointment two, um, I, I think that corruption and, and favoritism can come into play even with a, even within a small group of educated individuals. I think um, especially favoritism um, would be uh, would not be good if somebody if someone wanted to be on the e-board but someone already on the e-board and that person disagreed with their disagreed with them. With uh, the direction they thought the institute should go, they could purposely not try to get that person or not suggest that person to the director, so that person wouldn't even have a chance. And then the people on the e-board can also should, can also um, uh, just submit themselves as options if they're not gra graduating, and so they could effectively just make sure that they retain their positions with almost no check. And so. Um, I know the, the direction of the Honest Institute is that an industry, but it's not a business, it's not an industry, and so I don't think it's fair to take democracy out of the equation. Basically, whoever we decided. Yeah, I mean, you can have this whole thing also work on the slate. The that's the the opposite word. So, <clears throat> one thing with election, though, and, and all your points about um, parallels to the United States Constitution is that, unlike the United States. We aren't a government, really, of course. Like, we don't get to control um, populations and military and all of those kinds of things like that. Um, so the stakes are a lot lower, and you end up getting a lot less people interested in pursuing a position, because really, it's a volunteer position that entails a lot of work. Um, so there's some people that are interested in doing it, and there's really good reasons to be on the executive team. But a lot of times with elections, we end up with one candidate for each position. As an example, uh, in the last year, I was in this Okay, so basically, 
with but not a lot of membership at large and so they don't get to really prove their skills and dedication and passion to the, the membership at large but um, they get to prove themselves with uh, to their liaisons to the uh, VPs to the president that kind of thing and you work your way through getting to know all of these dedicated passionate people in a small group setting really getting to work with them seeing their ups their downs and um, Andy mentioned kind of earlier working your way up you know, starting out in the committee, moving to liaison, moving to maybe be president, that kind of thing, and moving up. Um, and I think that it's easier to prove yourself to the people that you work with and move yourself up in positions like that than trying to prove yourself at a membership that largely only makes one spot and doesn't really talk to you very much. I just say, just because, like, you had no opponent last year, and even if all positions, like, only one person ran, like, I don't think that's a reason to completely throw, like, democracy out the window or the box. Like, that's not going to be a lot of No, no, I just said that. Well, I also think that there's a lot of people in the Institute, and and, a point, and all those people are supposed to be benefited, but the more they're, the more they're cut off from leadership, 
the West are going to be able to influence what kind of things the Institute does. And so one of the only ways for, you know, your, your average member who's not on the committee or not on the e-board to have any input um, would be through an election, but with the absence of those, the average member almost has no input besides their class representatives who aren't even, who aren't even on the e-board to help make so I just think that I don't, I guess if, if the point, if making it an industry means taking away democracy, then I don't see how making it Making all is a good idea. I think the point that you make is very important. Um, we should keep in mind that the, the honors institution needs to benefit its most You know, it needs to have opportunities for that number. If we take it from it into a business, you know, it can't be stacked like this. It can't have, you know, people who make all the decisions up here and then the people down here have no input or something. You know, we got to find a way to balance that because, I mean, me and Pam, uh, who else is associated? We wouldn't be here if it was set up. You know, we wouldn't have any say. And, I mean, this is the Constitution. You know, this is the body of the honor program. Uh, we're getting to say more right now than the second or the third year or the fourth years that aren't present. And I think that is the way it should be. If you want to make a change to be able to change. If you look at an industry like McDonald's, you know, who gets benefited? Do the, do the McDonald's workers get benefited or does the CEO and the executive board get benefited? I would argue that the McDonald's workers are not get benefited and that's why it's not good to try to, if, if an organization's goal is to serve all of its people and I mean, the mission statement is, you know, to, to a student organization that supports students in challenging women's career, and graduate and mission activities and opportunities. If, if the goal is to support and enrich all of the students, then setting up in such a way that the only the top tier people have power and the lower tier people are barely involved. I mean, I don't I guess for that reason it's not a calendar, the Honors Institute calendar will be up within the next couple weeks and we'll have all the committee meetings on there so we can show them. Because that is one thing that I think we're leaving out of this discussion is the power of those committees. Right. Uh, I don't know if that committee people are appointed in the 
Yeah, that, that's the issue, is that we have a difficult time getting people to run for positions currently, and we don't want to force anyone into running for a position they truly really don't want to take. I don't have an idea. I, I like the idea of sleep, but it's kind of difficult to nail down to make sure that you're not forcing people to run. But I think people might take more initiative if they were asked, as opposed to have to be not related, which would be a plus of that. I thought you made a really good point about the economic reference and profit and stuff like that. Because the honest is based on like the profit, like money or anything like that. We're based on in our investments. Our investments are into our members. Because when one member does well, it reflects good on the entire honest program, which makes it easier for anybody in the honest program to get that job and have that prestige. Mm -hmm. Our investors are members in the audience too, not people who want money. They're also our investments. If I can make one addition to one of the investments, so I think in terms of here, people are profiting from the power of the country in this country. We passed down that's something that was one of my major goals of this past year. It's a condition that has not only responsibility for the work of the community, but the primary goal of the work of the community is not just passing down the responsibilities for the policy. That's one of the reasons why we're at the end of that board of That's the that that Maybe the class reps could be on the e-board. Although there's going to be more people, that can also be a good thing because then there'll be more uh, more opinions represented. And that way, if, if there's someone uh, that's not on a committee and they're not in a position of power that wants to make a suggestion about the there's a role to a committee or something, that they can go to their class rep, and then their class rep will be able to go directly to the e-board that they're part of instead of going to the membership committee and then the head of the membership committee going to the e-board. So uh, it's a lot. So, at least that way there would be some elected positions and then the heads of the committees themselves would be. I think it might also be a good point about all of those different proposals that you had. Like if a membership has an idea, then there should be a process to submit a proposal to the appropriate committee. So that's another way that they can really get their input in. I, yeah, I just wanted to, to point out that it's important to remember the executive team whose only responsibility is for the general direction of the institute, not day-to-day -day activities. 
day-to-day -day activities are handled by the committees, which dilutes the power into the hands of the committee members. If the committee members aren't, don't like how their vice president is running their committee, they can impeach them, which is a possibility. They can go to the director. They have, they can talk to the person. I mean, there's a lot of um, avenues there, but also proposals from general membership doesn't go to the executive team first. It goes to the class representatives, and the class representatives can overrule the executive team's yay and nay on those. So. A lot of the power does rest with the class representatives who are elected already. It's just the general direction and overall vision of the institute that rests with the executive team. Another thing to keep in mind is that we all have to vote nice. Right. Because how many students can you find who can maintain a 3.5 GPA at Michigan Tech and then attend you know, however many meetings? And then once you put them into a committee, go to the committee meetings. And then if you decide that anyone in the committee has to also go to the e meetings, they have to go to those meetings as well. I mean, that's a lot of time. And I mean, out of 300 students, that wears down fast. You, know, you run out of people. Um, and so, you know, the president, the president can't be corrupted. Because if the president becomes corrupted, people leave. And then he's got nothing left. Because then people don't do the committees. And I'm in the communications committee, and I see how much work that committee alone has to do. And it's a lot of work. It's too much work for four or five people. Uh, the committees have to have eight, nine, ten people in them. And, okay, so there's four committees, and then there's eight, nine, ten people in each committee. Um, you know, that starts taking away from membership of the Honors Institute right away. Not to mention the, the amount of people that'll drop out. <clears throat> it just, you know, we have to play nice because if we don't, we're going to lose members. And if we lose members, we fall apart. So I don't think corruption or anything like that is a very big reality. Yeah. 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 I guess, um, I guess I understand, like, I understand, like, all the arguments, but I still don't see the point of, I don't see the downside of voting, I guess. Like, if one person runs, and that person is probably going to be appointed anyway, it doesn't seem to me like there's no reason not to elect them for the simple reason that, like, democracy is fair and equal, and, like, that's something we should support as people, whether or not it's in this organization or as a country or as an, or as an individual. And so I can understand... Um, and, and I love how like, you were talking about like breaking down the power and, and putting that more people in the in, in, with the members and the committees, and that's good. But I don't know, I don't understand how how that translates to election is a worse system of appointment. Like we could, that power could still be transferred down to committees, and the committee heads could still be elected. And to me, that's not necessarily any worse than if they were appointed. So I understand that. Well, I understand my arguments, but I don't understand why election is. You know, maybe you'll end up getting elected. You know, that'll promote competition. 
you know, and actually that competition will actually make the position better. Because I mean you can see you can see everywhere that competition actually promotes growth. You know, people get better when they compete with other people. I agree, but there's no competition in the point. It, it seems likely to me that if someone has been a good doctor for two years, and it, it doesn't seem likely that that person who has a say in the name of their sense of the director is not going to try to get appointed again. And so, I don't know. I, I guess I just don't see the downside. Well, I guess it's one like, advantage of the in the election in that uh, me, if I'm going to run for something, a lot of times, you know, like, like I feel nervous because maybe it's going to be that I don't know everyone who's used to that is a problem. You don't need everything if you don't need um, And I feel like at some point during elections, it can be more complicated than the actual decision. Uh, what that person is doing and what they have done. Uh, and I feel like the point is to keep that more in mind. Because the executive team actually does really need to set that product. And then you feel that way. Involved in institute leadership in order to benefit the institute really do have people's best interests in mind. I've been serving on the executive team for the last, what, four years? This will be my fourth year now. And there's a reason I ran for senior classes representative this year instead of vice president or treasurer or secretary or whatever. It's because I know that I'm getting older and someone else needs to take my place. I need to be in a mentorship position instead of in a leadership position because I'm going to be gone next year. And I don't need to leave a power back in behind. I need to train someone for continuity. And I mean, I, I certainly hope that people in the future will also have the best interests of the institute in mind like that. But um, another thing that we've seen over the last five years is um, we've been building the institute for five years. We went from a group of people who did not want to show up to any meetings, didn't want to do anything. We could barely pass the Constitution the first time four years ago that we brought it up for a vote. We had to have probably what about three votes and oh yes, two votes, and we had to kick out anyone who didn't vote in order to pass it because so many people did not want to respond to it. Well, Sorry, but yeah. we didn't do that. Oh, we didn't. We talked about doing that, but the thought that was that my employee would do that. Well, at least that was my main point. What we did instead <laughs> was after it came along the first time, again, the year our first. Oh, yeah. And that's what it is. No, 
completely unrelated to that, but it was it was going back to elections for kind of like democracy for the sake of democracy, just putting elections out there because we should support democracy as as, as Americans. Well, my my yeah, I understand that it's it's a very important principle, especially Americans who love our freedom, and that's that's fine. But what we've seen is actually elections driving people away from the institute as members, especially in the senior classes. When you have, like, when you require people to vote in these elections and to do these kinds of things and they just want to skate by, they'll leave the institute instead of doing it. And so if we're making them vote on one person per position and just going in and clicking, yeah, that's fine, sure, whatever, they'll leave. <laughs> exactly. And that's, that's why this whole thing came about. Appointment versus election question is we don't want to drive. If people don't want to vote without being involved, then actually should remember. I would argue that if people are really involved at all, they can be part of this. They don't want to be involved in something that is trivial. Like, why are you putting this up to election when only one person is running for position? This is why are you wasting your time with this? I want to be, worried. I want to be bothered with important things, not just trivial matters. <laughs> Uh, if people are enacted, I don't think they should be uh, I would argue that if people are enacted, they should be in an institute, and that's better for people who are in the institute because then they are active and that reflects better than other people are active. It's fine now. It's glorious start to become a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. I 
When do we make a decision? Like, at what point tonight do we decide? Yeah, I think we're really going to put it down to you. We don't. We also don't want to require people to like our Facebook page. That's an optional part of membership. So. <laughs> well, yeah, we tried that with all the thing, making that required. So now we can do elections through there. Yeah. I think it works perfectly because everybody, everybody uses Canvas. Everybody has to use Canvas. The Honors Institute. I mean, it's the one thing on Canvas that. Doesn't get us required. That's kind of made everything else. Any of the comments before we close this up? I didn't get here. Thank you. Just give us a moment. Close my hand just to say
So that way, the president has to get the way. Yeah, the details are handled by the committee, and then the president just checks off. And it goes to the current stage, which is us. Yep. General membership, goals is either legislative, financial appropriation, or initiative on the committee. Committee processes it, whatever, and then they finish processing it. They have to get back to the committee and say, yep, we're going to go. Just mentioned that the president has to say, yep, we're going to go. This works if the president says no. Uh,